we have a few different components of our dynamic warm up. One is, is there's like the, almost the general warm up portion of that. Sometimes guys will start on the bike for five or eight minutes at the most, just just to loosen up and get their brains wrapped well around what's going on and and get that sort of that pattern going, get a little bit of blood flow, getting a little bit of heart rate up. We'll do some knee to chest movements, some high knee steps, a lunge walk, reverse lunge, some shuffling, some moving in both a uh, sort of a linear as well as a lateral movement patterns. I uh, will do uh, like an inchworm, or, or I think I've heard it. I think it's called an inchworm in most world, but an inchworm exercise. So we're trying to basically get a lot of the joints moving, get the joints activated correctly, get muscles lengthened and warmed up and ready for movement. Once we get that, then we'll specifically activate muscle that we're using that day, whether it's some glute work we have to do, whether it's some upper back, some rhomboids, you know, that type of stuff as well. Um, guys roll out often before that, they'll roll out muscles that are tight from previous workouts just to prep them. Sometimes we'll have issues where we'll do some release pre uh, prior to the workout as well to make sure that any muscle knots or muscle bundling or nerve bundling that's, that's going to affect the workouts is, is out of there so we can get true movement and get our movements to be more correct. <laughs> The triangle drill for me is, is probably one of my favorite drills. Now, specifically for defensemen, I, I, I look at it, it absolutely emulates a, like a penalty kill situation, but also for any guy on the penalty kill, it emulates that a sort of short movement uh, burst and return back into your, your, your locked position or your sort of coach position. But what I love about it is, is responding to coach's cue, players are moving and having to follow that under a little bit of fatigue. I pulled the triangles out and lengthened about probably about two and a half, three feet after a few warm-up drills with him and, and made him work in about a two to four step uh, movement. So it, it was, a, it was a more, than, more than just a quick lunge position. It was a two to four steps in a, in a direction and back to his return position. So getting after loose pucks and if you miss it, get back in the position or if you get it, making your next step. So basically that return or a direction change as well. When we're roaming deadlift to the RDL is one of those exercises that I think is, is in probably every coach's toolbox. It's a great posterior chain exercise, hamstring, low back, glute dominant exercise, and then the pulling motion. I like it for all those reasons. I like the fact that we're seeing great shoulder scap packing, so scapular packing of the shoulder blade, stability for the athlete as they're having holding a lot of weight under their body, having to have those shoulder blades nice and strong, and then be able to you know, produce a lot of strength and power through the, uh, through the hamstrings and low back glutes. We do a, uh, a rope pull. We use like a two-inch diameter, three-inch diameter, basically marine cut rope uh, as, as basically a, a rope pull up. It, uh, the athletes having to handle the grip associated with that, having to hold on to something. Down. If you're gonna be on video, I'll stretch yourself. The the inverted roll is a, the horizontal progression of a pull-up action. So we'll, we'll often combine that with the, uh, with the vertical pull, like a pull-up, or we'll do them on separate days and have a vertical pull day and a horizontal pull day. Using the weight again, that's been something we progress to from using body weight, uh, inverted rows. Often we'll have physio balls under their feet. We can change that, we can have a bench under their feet. Um, at this point, we, uh, we, we use their, their sort of their legs uh, at a bent position, like we keep fairly parallel to the body. Today they used a little bit of weight, they had some weight either hanging off a belt or with a, with a weight vest. To get to that point we've done a lot of pull-ups over the summer, over the off-season to uh, develop enough strength. We use the Kaisers for, for a lot of different things and with the Kaiser functional machines it allows for, for a ton of exercises. What we did today was at, at a little bit of higher velocity or in a power movement we are trying to strengthen some of the pulling and those muscles that are involved in scap retraction and sort of shoulder development at a, at a higher speed. So trying to develop quicker movements through that so they can handle when it, because in the sport, things happen at a high speed with a lot of, a lot of resistance. So we're trying to do things that quickly to help protect the body against any injury in case of battling. And if you do things slow and all of a sudden in your sport, you do something quickly. That's one of the things where you, you tend to lose. Power, come on. No movement, no swing, let's go. Your shoulders a little bit Confidence. Yeah, well, you got the race to go. After we're getting through a bunch of uh, pretty, pretty decent primary lifts, we went into that secondary complex that involved 
as much as we could, uh, single leg action. So, so using one leg often as a uh, as an anchor, and the other leg as an action. So, from our using the valve slides to do a reverse lunge, and focusing on really pulling through our body, through our hips, to re return to a standing position. We added uh, just to get more volume of backs, obviously uh, alternating bent over roll with the dumbbells. And by adding sort of a few exercises like that together, it allows us to get a little more volume and hit the body a little bit harder while we need to get, you know, while working uh, on getting sort of a, that whole that whole body workout going on. We, we tend to have our primary exercises separated, and when I can, when I have to, we'll, uh, especially when we're skating a lot, we'll complex some of our secondary exercises. Some weights, grab some weights. Come on, hold, keep your hips in line, keep your shoulders, let's go. Is that strong enough, Pets? Walk other guys to do that. I see other guys pull without having to do that. Come on, keep your hips. You know what you're doing? You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm doing it. Sure, I'm gonna do it. What? What? We focus first on a little bit of a like a, a dead bug rolling pattern, and uh, so we're in a dead bug position, getting him to keep keep his chain closed and his elbow to his knee, and focus on as much pressure as he can there while rotating his body and basically rolling over. So. I think, I think it's more or less stolen, a little bit of a poor version of the stolen exercise from Gray Cook's uh, FMS program. At the same time, uh, I, I like it for, for our athletes as far as teaching A to be able to hold the proper glute position and, and core position and having the strength and the true, sort of true core strength. And so it's a tough exercise. I know they didn't like it too much today and, and uh, our guys weren't very happy. I wasn't very happy about it, but it was a good exercise for him today. And, and then the, the sequencing of movements that are forced in, in like a, a primary a roll pattern and adding that to a to a dead bug is, is just more of a challenge for him and more components for him to deal with. <laughs> we don't do this. My guy, my fucking pull it in. There you go. Never fucking fuck this stuff up. Come on, keep it, bracing it. Elongate that. Elongate that. Roll it over. Oh, 
Well, I'll get through your arm. Arm, reach, reach through your arm. Sled pushing is something that I haven't done a ton in the past, and I'm, I'm kind of fought it a little bit. We've done other things similar to that. So this year we broke them into the sleds, and uh, the guys like them. They, they, they do like them. So first and foremost, they're happy with them. They hate doing them. They like the way it feels. So we're, we're getting a high level of, of lactic acid buildup, and some of the things we're doing is causing on, on the actual conditioning component to it. 
it's tough. It's a battle sometimes. It's the mental side of that, when you got to push through it and not give up. I think there's a key component there, right there. Um, being very careful to keep and not mess up like form. I think when, when we do too much sled work, and make too heavy a weight, you'll see guys and they're, they're stepping in the running positions. And I just saw it a bit today even where they're still battling to keep their form as correct as possible. We also use the sled to do some, uh, some ankle mobility work where you're pushing low and you're going through a range of motions. So you're going a little slower. You saw Mike early on going a little slower to, to run up through his calves and his ankles and strengthen, strengthen through his calves and slowly his muscles and that. In a, in a low position, so that those are things that we will do as well. We've done uh, using a harness and a chest harness. We'll do a backwards walk, a VMO activation exercise using the using the sleds as well.